Hi, it's Joe from Joe's Country Junction, and I am here to welcome you to my sewing room today. And I thought I would shoot a Sew with Joe video. And here is what I'm working on. Okay, this is the scrap quilt I'm working on. Um, it is partially together. Here I don't have the top completely together. You can see that I'm making uh, some blocks, and they all have a little red diamond in the center and just to kind of give it some interest rather than just a straight crumb quilt i thought i would add those little diamonds in there to make it a little more fun and here are some of the blocks i'm working on um you can see here's a block i'm using everything from my scrap bucket um no browns in this but pretty much and no grays pretty much i'm putting every other color in um, I'm doing this quilt a little bit differently than we sometimes do. Typically when we do a quilt, we like to keep the like colors away from each other to kind of give a broader um, congruent look to the quilt. Well, this time around I'm doing something different. So like in this block right here, you can see like this is the same print and this is the same print. And over here, this block has the same print. Well, when it comes time to put this quilt together, I'm putting those like ones together so that it creates some interesting kind of intersections as I go. So um, I'm purposely trying to find stuff that kind of matches. So like up here, I'll probably couple this block with this block and I think it makes it harder to see where the block intersections are well because I'm doing that because most people would think that the block intersection would be here but instead that that's where the intersection is going to be so um, I'm going to take a second and prep my sewing space and then I'm going to show you how I'm making some of these blocks I just love this green color in this one here's another one that they'll be coupled together and here's yet another one that has that same print so when it comes time to lay out I'll probably lay those all out together so are you ready to sew I'll be right back okay I'm at my machine now I'm hoping that you can see everything that I'm doing and I'll try to walk you through how I make one of my uh I guess maybe diamond crumb blocks I don't know what you want to call them for sure um, I don't have a name, specific name for them yet. I probably should. Um, maybe we should just make it official and call it Diamond Crumbs. So here we go. Um, I have a few that are done here. And you can kind of see what look I'm going for. And I'm just going to put them down there. Okay, there's another one that I have done. And I have some in various states of progress. I have some that need just a couple more strips put on them. I have some that are just the center portion is done. Um, I have one here that needs to get ironed. I'm hoping this time around that I have things situated pretty good so that you can see the things that I'm doing. Um, I'm going to start out with taking, I cut these little red squares one and a half inches wide or one and a half inches square. And over here, I have a whole pile of little triangles and small pieces. Whoops, there's, these belong over on this side. It's a huge mess here. And anytime if you're working with crumbs, you know that it gets to be kind of a, a mess. <laughs> so uh, you'll just have to bear with me as I go along and try to dig and find the pieces that I need. But over here are all uh, just triangles. And one of the things that I like to do is when I make a quilt, and I make the binding, I like to cut off those little triangle pieces. And I'm such a nerd, I keep those triangle pieces and then I use them in projects like this. And I just keep them in, um, this is an old canning jar, and I pull them out when I need to do something like this and I need little triangles. So I'll set that aside because I already have quite a stack here pulled out. And so I take a little red square. Hopefully I have some more here. Yep, I do hidden under the stacks. And um, I take the little triangle and I uh, place it on my piece like this. And then I just sew it. I do this leader and ender style so that I always have a piece in the machine. This is a piece that I previously had sewn um, a strip onto. And so like this, I'll come over to my iron over here and then I'll iron. 
this is not my usual way of ironing. Um, usually I, I do a whole big stack and then I take them over to the iron. But for the sake of video purposes and you wanting to see what I'm doing, I brought my little travel iron over here. This was given to me by a blog reader, a little white travel mate, and I just love this little iron and I appreciate it so much that a blog reader gifted that to me. Okay, so when I'm doing this, I try to do like two or three blocks at a time, at least. Um, and so I'm just gonna set up another one and run that through the machine. And another one, I'm not paying too much um, attention to what colors I'm using as they're going in the machine. And I don't bother ironing yet. I just open this up and I grab another piece and I put it on and I feed it through. I kind of go for a quarter inch seam allowance, but if it's a little more or a little less, it doesn't bother me. On days that I know I'm going to have my grandson um, at my house that day, I'll get up early in the morning and I'll work on a huge stack of blocks and I'll get um, them ready so that they're ready for the iron. And then I'll take that downstairs and then when my grandson's napping, I will, um... oops, my camera fell down. I'm gonna lift my camera up just a little bit. There's like a happy medium between where my head's cut off <laughs> And where you can still see me. So, okay, now I have two pieces sewn on like this. So what I'm going to do is, this is like very uh, primitive. There's no like fanciness to it. So I am going to just take this over to my, right here I have a cutting barrel. And I'm just going to make a cut like this and even that up. And I'm going to make a cut like this and even that up. And then I'll just take these scraps, throw them in my scrap bucket over there. Or my garbage. So then now I have a piece that's like this and then I'll just iron that. It really doesn't make a difference which direction you press your seams on something like this. So now it's ready to get corners on the other two sides. So I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to lay it along here like this and then sew that down. I'm gonna take my other two pieces because remember I'm working at three blocks at a time and I'm just gonna cut those corners off. I'm gonna cut the corners off on this one. Throw these little scraps in the bucket and iron these. Um, I told you in the opening of this that I was only using um, uh, Colors of the Rainbow and a teal. Um, and then I was also using black and white, but no gray or brown. And you can use whatever colors you want, but I think um, it's important to kind of decide a color palette as you go. I'm sewing on my old Singer. It's a 1591. Okay, so I have this side sewn down, so I'm going to put another corner on the other side. Um, let's see what we have in our corner pile here. Looks like pink polka dots going on next. Sometimes when I do these centers, I make um, all of the triangles the same like this. And sometimes I'll make opposite corners the same like this. And sometimes I just put random pieces on. And this time around, it's just random pieces. I like to kind of change it up a little bit. Okay, I got one more to run through. Okay. 
Now these go to the machine and I press these open, or not open, I guess I just press them. So now I'm gonna have a shape that has little doodads sticking out from it. I just take my scissors and cut, cut, and just kind of, not really square it up, but get it so that um, it doesn't look too bad, so that the lines are straight. So when I add new pieces on, I can do that. Well, remember I'm doing this um, uh, in later ender style. So to get this next one out, I need to start adding strips. So I have this piece here and I'm just gonna add it to the side. And it's too long. So I'll sometimes, when the pieces are small, I'll just do this and then um, run it through. And I have these two other ones that it need to be pressed. One thing I really like about doing uh, kind of like this improv crumb style block is that there's really like very little preparation um, to get ready to make these. So I'm just trimming. And trim it again. If you want to take a ruler and do this, you sure can, but you definitely do not need to. Oh, it's stuck to the bottom of my sleeve. Oh, <laughs> and onto the floor it went. Okay, I have it back. So this one has a lot of white, so I'm not gonna use the same white on it. I think I'm gonna use this white over on this piece. I try, once I pick up a string, um, to use up the whole string because um, it's just easier to not have to pick up and put down and pick up and put down all the time. So I've got this little stack over here of smaller pieces. So I'm just kind of rummaging to see if there's any pieces that are um, super small that can be used for this. Oh, here's a piece, but it's kind of wide. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut this in half and then put it on the side of my block and feed it. Okay, that one had a little bit of leftover on the side I just chopped off. Now, as you're going, you can choose a couple different things. You can choose to keep working on opposite sides or you can come in and put a piece on this side like this. It's up to you. In this case, I'm gonna not even use this piece because this is kind of bigger. And, oh look, instead I have this piece, so I'm gonna add this piece to this side. It's really just uh, casual sewing. And I just love that. And I'm pulling the one off the back and bringing it around to the front. That's a common thing that I do. Um, it takes a little while to dig through and find a scrap the right size. Okay, now I've got two I can pull off the back and then I'll just iron them. If you don't have an iron close to you, it's okay to do some finger pressing as well. Okay, now you might remember I was doing the debate between this piece and this piece earlier. Well now, remember I said I'm trying to keep some of the like pieces together to add some interest, so I'm gonna add this piece to the side of this. And I will get this one ironed. If you've uh, been doing a lot of sewing, uh, you've probably already made a crumb quilt in your time and, and know what a mess it can be. Um, you can't see it, but right now I've got a big stack of fabric. Well, you can kind of see it right down here, but there's a, the stack goes higher. And then I've got a big bucket over here that's full of strings. I've been working on this quilt for a while already. And of course, like everyone says, you don't really make a dent in your scraps. It's almost like they um, multiply while you're sewing. 
or maybe while I'm sleeping, I don't know. Okay, I'm trying to find a string here. Okay, how about this little orange guy at the bottom? I've been trying to make sure orange isn't a color I use a lot, so I don't have a lot of orange strings. So, okay, now I'm getting that the pieces are a little longer, so I'll just take my scissors behind here and I'll just clip in between. And put another one down on this one. And clip. Okay, I'm gonna iron this one over because I'm gonna take and make another little L, being I still have some of this fabric. So I'm gonna use more of this along the side here. Clip. Now this one's smaller, so I'm going to just put it here. It's too small for what I'm working on now. But I'm going to put this one right over here. And the last little tail of this is so small, I'm going to just throw it away. Okay, so that used up that string, and it feels so good. I got one more string out of the bucket. <laughs> oh, dear. There's many, 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 many more to go though, so. Now, okay, now we're gonna find a different. Okay, what do I have down here? Well, looks like maybe some yellow. We'll try a couple yellow pieces on here or one. This is wide and I don't really like to put wider strips um, so much in the center, but that's okay. Um, this has quite a bit of yellow and orange in it already, so I'm gonna grab a different color. Um, here I have a darker purple. We'll put that on there. I quite often add two pieces to whatever I'm sewing before I go to the iron. Uh, it just matters where I'm at. Um, so see my block is growing. And keep using this purple. And I'll put purple on this one too. This is uh, this project has been a UFO that I've had for quite some time. Um, I'm making a big push to try to get my UFOs done. Uh, I think I have oh, maybe about 12. That's my official number. I if I dug around, I probably have a couple more too. But I'm really just trying to knock those out. I know a lot of you are going 12. That's not very many. And I know there's another whole group of you going 12. How can you manage to have 12? Um, we all kind of have our own personal preference when it comes to UFOs. And me, it doesn't really bother me that I have 12 UFOs. But the other day I was like in my sewing room and I was thinking about my sewing space. And I have a... 16 by 20 room and I have a closet off that room and sometimes I feel like I need more space and then I remember that I used to sew at a dining room table <laughs> and when I sewed at a dining room table I was you know just dreaming and dreaming about having this big space that I have now and now I'm feeling like I sometimes don't have that much space, even though I'm in a 16 by 20 room. So then I got looking at what I have and what I need and what I don't have. And 
Um, I decided the main thing I think I needed to do was to use my space better. And one of the things I could do th that I could do is to whittle down the totes I have full of UFOs. Um, I had a blue piece here and it was kind of wrinkled so I ran it, the iron over it and then I'm going to add it to this. And oh, that's not long enough. It'll be long enough for this one. And so if I have 12 UFOs laying around here and they're using up 12 totes and those 12 totes are using up 12 totes worth of space and granted they're only the small totes that are this big or so. But if those 12 totes were not full of projects, then I would have that much more space in my sewing room. So then I got thinking it's just time to tackle those UFOs so I have a little more space in my sewing room. And that made me very happy to think that I could, it's basically this cabinet that you see behind me. Um, it's double wide and it's, oh, I don't know, six feet long maybe. And the whole bottom of this is full of UFO totes. And so if those UFO totes were gone, I would have that much more room. So rather than whine and complain about how much room, I do or don't have. I thought I should just tackle that and clean up my UFOs and I would feel happy that my UFOs were all done and I'd be happy that I had more space. And when I've talked about that, I've gotten a variety of responses from people because I have some people that go, you know, 12 isn't very many. And some people say, oh, you have 12? I couldn't, I, I can't all handle it if I have more than one. So everybody just has their own, um, well, it's the wrong word, but pain tolerance <laughs> as far as handling UFOs go. So I'm just keep grabbing more pieces and more strips and keep adding them onto my blocks and my blocks just keep growing and growing. And there comes a point that I can see that this one is getting kind of close to size. So what I'll do in that case is I'll take my ruler because I keep a ruler by my, by my side here. And my ruler is a six in or it's six inches wide and I'm cutting my block six inches wide. So I'll just lay this on and see if it covers six inches. And this one that will cover the six inches. So this one's going to be put in the done pile, but it'll have to be trimmed up. My other two I know aren't that big yet, so I need to add something to them. And um, I think I'm just going to add this piece to this one. see where this one's not big enough I can look at it and tell I think I'm just gonna check it and see six inches well it's wide enough but you know it actually is just big enough so that one can go in the pile too I think this one's gonna be done so remember I want to keep something in my machine so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back to starting some more new blocks. And I'll pull this one off and see how big this one is. And I'll bring my ruler out again, lay it on, and this one's big enough too. So that's how I made uh, three of my blocks for my quilt. One, uh, two, three. So that gets me three blocks closer to an end of this quilt and one more UFO checked off my list. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I'm so glad that you could join me in my sewing room today and see how I make my diamond crumb blocks. Catch you later. Bye.